The truth is that I do not get a flu vaccine every year. However, I am going to get one this year. Recent reports out of Australia where they've already had their flu season have shown that they had a particularly bad flu season. In this video, I'm going to go over what exactly is in the flu vaccine this year, what are the side effects, who are the groups that are most at risk for complications from influenza, and also what you can do if you have needle phobia. Is there an option for you? Yes, there is, and I'm going to discuss that as well. Now, another one of the issues is that in Australia, the flu season was not only much worse than in years pre-COVID, however, the flu season started much, much earlier. What do we need to know about the flu vaccine? First of all, there are other ways that we can help to prevent getting colds and flus during these winter months. Now, one of the things that you can do obviously is to wash your hands really well for a good 20 seconds often, and also eating a whole foods diet, making sure that you get adequate sleep and at least 20 minutes of exercise a day will all help you to maintain a healthy immune system. Now, I also do take a multivitamin daily, and because of the area that I live in, Canada, we really do not get a lot of sunlight generally in the winter, so I do also take vitamin D daily during this time of the year, and I take that in the morning. In addition to this, we do know that the flu vaccine is the best way that we have to prevent influenza infection. There are some high-risk groups that that might want to consider getting a flu vaccine for added protection. And this includes children ages six months to five years of age, pregnant women, those with cardiac disease, respiratory conditions, diabetes, obesity, kidney disease, those who are immune compromised, those who have liver disease, and those who have been diagnosed with frailty. Now, those who have asthma or COPD are also at higher risk for complications from influenza. We know that those who have those conditions can suffer serious respiratory effects, including complications from a viral or secondary bacterial pneumonia that can sometimes land these people in hospital or require a lengthy treatment with antibiotics. Now, I wanna stop here and talk to you about a concept that I've talked about on the channel previously called immunosenescence. So we know that as we age, our immune system also ages and it actually becomes much weaker, which makes us more susceptible to infection. Consequently, older adults have lower levels of B and T cells, and they also have higher rates of B cell apoptosis, which is natural cell death. These factors lead to fewer circulating lymphocytes in the body, and this is partly what contributes to a weakened immune system. And again, this concept is called immunosenescence. And this is partly why the over 65 age group is at particular risk for complications from influenza. Now the complications from influenza do not only happen at the time of infection. A person who has had influenza is at a much greater risk of complications like cardiac events and stroke for up to three months after infection. In addition, the risk for influenza attributed death is actually five times greater for those with chronic heart disease, 12 times greater among those with chronic lung disease, and 20 times greater among those who have both chronic heart disease and lung conditions. So what is in the flu vaccine this year? Well, here are the strains that are included in the 2022 influenza vaccine in Canada. And these vaccines will include two A strains of influenza and two B strains. Another great question is how effective is the flu vaccine? We are seeing moderate efficacy from the flu vaccine that was given in Australia. However, it's really hard to know what the circulating strain will be until influenza actually hits a certain geographic area. Are there any contraindications to getting the flu vaccine? Well, we know that if you've ever had a severe allergic reaction to a flu vaccine, otherwise known as anaphylaxis, that would be a contraindication. We also don't recommend that you get your flu vaccine while you are experiencing illness. It is recommended that you wait until any of these symptoms from any previous cold or viral infection resolve before you get your flu vaccine. Also, if you have any allergy to any component of the flu vaccine, that would be a contraindication. However, this is 
quite rare to be honest and we don't see it that often. Now it used to be that if you had an allergy to eggs that it wasn't recommended for you to get the vaccine. This has been dismissed and there is no problem for those who have an allergy to eggs or egg whites or any portion of the egg to be getting the flu vaccine. What if you have someone in your family who is afraid of needles? Is there an option for you? As someone who has suffered from needle phobia and has since recovered, first of all, I understand. Needles used to make me cringe and it was a very, very difficult experience. However, there is a product available in Canada called Flumist. Flumist is a nasal spray vaccine that is recommended for those between two and 17 years of age. However, if someone has needle phobia, flu mist might be an option for those up to 59 years of age. Now, you should know that the supplies of flu mist are not necessarily huge in all pharmacies and they might not always be available. So it's a good idea to call your pharmacy and specify whether you would like flu mist. Now, because of the way that flu mist works in the body, it is not recommended for those who are immune compromised or will be around those who are immune compromised. So if you do have someone in your family that is like I was and completely deathly afraid of needles, flu mist might be an option for them and it's something that they could discuss with their pharmacist. What are the side effects of influenza vaccination? Well, most people generally tolerate the flu vaccine quite well. The most frequent side effects are maybe some pain at the site of injection, some warmth or tenderness that only lasts a couple of days, sometimes some fatigue, and very rarely fever. However, this is usually quite mild, and again, it's self-limiting and resolves in a couple of days. How long after getting the vaccine are you protected from influenza? We know that it takes approximately two weeks for your body to develop an adequate immune response that would be protective for you from the influenza infection. And I'd like to emphasize here again that it's looking like we may start to see influenza a lot sooner this year than we have in previous years. When we spend a lot of time indoors with others, it's very easy to contract a viral illness from another person and for that to spread around quite quickly. So getting a flu vaccine in addition to doing the things I said, like eating a whole foods diet, ensuring that you get adequate amounts of sleep, and I do take a couple of supplements as well that I believe do help to strengthen my body through these winter months. Thank you so much for joining me. Take care and stay healthy. Bye-bye.